Lando Calrissian in the Star Wars franchise, Billy Bob Williams made movie history. But that's just one of his standout roles. And this morning, he's looking back at life on screen and off with our man in Hollywood, Ben Mankiewicz. Valentine's Day at the historic Schomburg Center in Harlem serves as the perfect backdrop for Billy Dee Williams fans to show their love. You became our sex symbol, right? Williams, now 86, helped define the modern romantic leading man on the big screen. First in 1972, opposite Diana Ross in Lady Sings the Blues. You alone for long? Then again three years later in Mahogany. I decided to become a romantic figure on the screen. So that was a literal decision to become yeah, a romantic figure? Yeah, I wanted to. I've always wanted to be. I used to tell my mom, I want to be like Rudolph Valentino. <laughs> Billy D. Williams didn't stop at Rudolph Valentino. He added a little Errol Flynn, a suave swashbuckler in a cape in The Empire Strikes Back. Hello, what have we here? That line became the title of his new memoir. It details his public and personal life, his close friendship with James Baldwin, backstage conversations with Laurence Olivier, his love of being in love. You know, when you wrote about it, you know, I had a weakness when it came to love and romance. The first moment of eye contact, a glance indicating interest, a mischievous smile, a, a sexy walk, a playful touch, that was my song. Yeah, well, that's all very true. And yet for all that charm and sex appeal, Williams convinced me He's shy. I, I'm really very insecure. It's strange, considering what you do, right? You give yourself in front of a camera with all these people watching. You become someone else. You emote. You cry. You get angry. Well, maybe that's why I become someone else, because I'm really insecure. Easier to be someone else yeah. than to be Billy Yeah, because I don't really like to talk about myself, and I like to keep to myself. Still, he's written a pretty revealing memoir discussing his relationships, his children, his three marriages. Did that contribute you know, to some relationships not working out long term, your sort of unwillingness to open no, up? No, I'm just a philanderer, you know. <laughs> or, or there's that. <laughs> Was there a big change moving out here? Oh yeah, absolutely. Are you kidding? Williams moved to Los Angeles in 1970, but he's a New Yorker. He grew up across the street from Central Park. His parents called him Sonny. His dad worked three jobs. His mother had a beautiful singing voice. She's the one who wanted to be in showbiz. I never really looked to be an actor. He set out to be a painter. He was good, too. Landed a scholarship at the National Academy of Design. Then a chance meeting with a CBS casting agent led to an acting gig. The roles just kept coming. And all of a sudden I find myself going in that direction. I always said, you know, like, every time I wanted to go right, some people would say, no, no, Billy, go left. There you go. Excellent. He went left, then cut back right in 1971, landing a part that changed his life. Playing Chicago Bears running back Gail Sayers in the TV movie Brian Song. Well, that whole experience for me, uh, as I described it, was an act of love. Brian's song is the true story of the relationship between Sayers and a teammate, Brian Piccolo, played by James Conn. Sayers and Piccolo became friends and the first interracial roommates in the NFL. Then came Piccolo's terminal cancer diagnosis. I love Brian and Piccolo. And I'd like all of you to love him too. 55 million Americans tuned in to say it had an impact is an understatement. You've had people come up to you and say, I never thought I could connect with a, with a black guy like that. There was a, um, a gentleman that I ran into who was a bigot who would not socialize with black folks. He was so deeply touched. It changed his whole perspective on things. Perspectives in Hollywood, though, changed slowly. After his success in the early 70s, Williams expected job offers to pour in. After all, he earned the nickname the Black Clark Gable. But it wasn't true because you lacked something that Clark Gable had, right? Which was opportunity. 
Yeah, right. It's frustrating. There's no question about it. But, you know, you take a negative and you try to see what you can do with it and maybe turn it around in some kind of an interesting fashion. Williams did more than turn the situation around. He just kept looking for compelling characters to play. I wanted to do the full spectrum that's right, of colors. You know, that's how I see myself. He found such a character when George Lucas called with an offer to work in a galaxy far, far away. As Lando Calrissian in The Empire Strikes Back. The first black character in the Star Wars universe. Williams, though, saw him as something else. How did you think of Lando? Well, you know, when I heard the uh, name Calrissian, I said, whoa, Carmenian, whoa, let me see what I can do with this. Uh, then I got the cape and I thought, whoa, Earl Flood. <laughs> By the end of the movie, Lando is clearly a good guy. But millions of Star Wars fans still saw him as the villain who handed Han Solo to Darth Vader. I had no choice. They arrived right before you did. I'm sorry. I picked my daughter from school. Kids running up to me. You betrayed Han Solo. I'd go on an airplane and I'd have a flight attendant. You betrayed Han Solo. I mean, it was crazy. Crazier still is that this talented actor with a 60 plus year career might be best known to a certain generation, my generation, for a string of beer commercials in the 1980s. There are two rules to remember if you want to have a good time. Rule number one, never run out of 45. Number two, don't forget rule number one. <laughs> now, I've remembered that. No, the other one was, uh, it works every time. No, you still got it. <laughs> <laughs> He still had it at 77 on Dancing with the Stars. And at 82, returning to Fly the Millennium Falcon as Lando Calrissian. For a shy and insecure man, Billy D. Williams sure has plenty to say. In a sense, I'm surprised you wrote the book. Well, I said, okay, you, you know, you're getting on in years, and uh, I started thinking, Legacy. Yeah. I want to leave some something for the grandkids and the kids that come after uh, that. Right. That they understand who Billy D. Williams was. Yeah. And I want people to know that you know I didn't approach life feeling like a victim. I just went out and had an, an adventure.